Paul made an interesting statement in sharing and relating church planting or sharing the gospel or preaching that he said if I or an angel of light should preach any other gospel don't listen to them they should be accursed first John was given to us that basically says if you have the son you have life if you don't you don't we're given a Bible for a reason it doesn't matter whether it's a NIV a King James or whatever it's just the whole idea is that it's a Bible from cover to cover in the volume of the book it speaks of Jesus the Holy Spirit was given to us also because he would open our eyes so to speak he would open our ears so to speak to be able to see and to hear what the Word of God would say to us that it would be God's Word speaking to us that he would cause it to be applicable or made real to us in the King James it's called chasten or uh, quicken it. the word is quickened to you in other words it's made alive it's made kismet if you want to call it that it's made to fit your circumstances today any day that you read it any day that you hear it if God is in it then he makes it fit for your day now the interesting thing is that without the Holy Spirit men of God without God have sat down and religiously tried to create a way to get to God and that's how religions are formed is that they're trying to get to God and it doesn't mean that religions are all bad it just means that the person in a religion needs to find God first and then use religion to bring them closer to God than what they had been without Jesus it's impossible to see God without the Holy Spirit it's impossible to please God so it's interesting to me when we hear these false ideas that are thrown out that somehow we have to do something or provoke something or change the Word of God so that this new generation or these young people will get the message it doesn't work that way I'm sorry you don't change the message to fit the circumstances if anything the person is changed if you'll hold true to the Word of God the Bible doesn't need to be rearranged it doesn't need to be changed as a matter of fact it doesn't need anything at all because God is in it God chooses to use it as he chooses in these latter days I might agree that the fear of the Lord may need to be taught more than the grace of God but that's for God to decide for each individual person that you know if a person wants to teach on hell that brings a person to the fear of the Lord and then teach about how grace causes a person to change their choices to follow Jesus that's their choice too for me the failure on man's part sometimes to properly or cooperatively with the Holy Spirit share the Word of God sometimes they're called doctrines and dogmas when people make up things in order to explain or to make fit there's a doctrine of evangelism that is false it says somehow that you know there was you know, and YWAM uses it and a lot of missionary groups use it all the time and it says that this gospel shall be preached into the whole world before the end comes and while that's a nice scripture the fact of how it's fulfilled is always in the Word of God not in the Word of man you see taken out of context you'll be told something like well if you want to see Jesus come sooner you know you need to go out and evangelize the world you know Jesus commands us to go and that's true it is true that this gospel will be preached to the entire world before the end comes but man isn't the one who's going to accomplish that you see man fails but God succeeds man was commissioned and God was given or God has given to every man a mission to go out and proclaim Jesus is coming to share 
the kingdom of heaven is at hand to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to freely, having received, they would freely give. And in some ways that's fulfilled in church, in some ways it's not, because there's the expectation of giving and there's the expectation of not giving. Every church will, not every church, a lot of churches will tell you, well, you, if you don't feel like giving, don't give. But then there's a teaching on it, and they usually get into it. But the point being is, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's true. Jesus is coming again. That's true. There's more to having the truth than just simply making it fit and using it to mislead people. Sometimes it's better to let God lead people than to make man lead people. Because a person who's told this gospel shall be preached to the entire world before the end comes will be guilted sometimes or connived or lied to, as the word would be accurately portrayed, into doing something God hasn't told them to do. They'll be manipulated. And that's not what man should be doing. Manipulated is man, I, pull, hated. You know, in the end, man hates it because man, I, who is man, pulls and I'm hated because of what I've done, manipulated. And the point being is that how he does it is the problem. You see, truth is truth. And the gospel gets preached by the angels in heaven, proclaiming it to the entire world. They fly out of the heavens literally, to every single human being, all of creation, including the universe, will hear the glorious gospel preached from angels, not from man. They like to play with sometimes some people that don't take the Bible quite literal and want to make everything in it allegorical. They'll say, well, angels are satellites, you know, and somehow that's going to fulfill the word. Well, it's not, but it's a nice idea. You know, it's kind of cute or cutesy, but it's not truth. So don't compromise your faith by compromising with the Word. Don't compromise in any way, shape, or form, and let the Word speak for itself. Jesus didn't compromise what he had to say. He said it, and he meant it, and he explained it always in the same context of when he said it. The Bible does the same thing is that there's no problem with knowing in the book of Revelation that the gospel is preached. It says that the angels go to the heaven and preach the glorious gospel to the entire world. There's the answer. Pretty simple. Straightforward, straight up, exactly as Jesus said. Don't abuse scripture by misusing your poor understanding of not taking the volume of the book to point to Jesus. You see, we can use the glorious gospel being preached to reveal that Jesus was accurate in what he said because then in the book of Revelation we're shown how it's fulfilled. Prophecy is always used to prove the accuracy of God, not the inaccuracy of man interpreting it. I've been told lots of things in doctrines and dogmas by the church and by Christianity that were false. The book of Revelation says, you know, the, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into him and sup with him. When I was in the Jesus movement in the early days, I was told that was used for evangelism, that I should go out and tell people that. And I did until an atheist, or actually a non-Christian, told me that wasn't written to non-Christians, it was written to Christians. And I was shocked, because then he opened the Bible, you know, my Bible, and showed me. That humiliated me, and I was mad. As a matter of fact, I was furious. I didn't take it out on the church. I didn't take it out on people. I went to God, and I was mad at him. I was not going to ever evangelize again until he showed me accurately what the Word of God was. And I'll admit, I pretty much know the Word of God now, as much as I understand it. I trust in Him to direct me for the things that I don't know, because most of it I don't know, but He's able to give, and give me, at the moment I need it, enlightenment for the perspective that I need to have according to His will and His way. Because I've already found out man's way doesn't work. Whenever you come up with cliches like, you know, the four spiritual laws and all these other things that, you know, sound good and are added to the scriptures, they don't always work out in the long run. Nowadays, you know, without the four spiritual laws, you know, it's like fact that you're a sinner, fact that God died for you, fact that, you know, you, you can have him leading your eternal life and that fact that you blah, blah, blah. 
the reality of it isn't that they are four spiritual laws. They're not laws. They're just four things that are true. They're four scriptures that are used. And the point being is that Jesus already has said and spoken, follow me, just call upon me, follow me, you know, teaches things, tells people what to do, honestly gives them straight up comfort as well as exhortation, as well as realization of knowing God in a personal, intimate way. I don't need to change the Word of God in order to make it fit for anyone. I can just share what Jesus said and people understand that. That's probably why doctrines are so dangerous sometimes because they get carried away in things that the Bible does not say. And that's usually most doctrines I've found. That's bottom line. The Bible didn't say it. And if the Bible doesn't say it, you know, why teach it? So, in the doctrine of evangelization or preaching to the whole world, don't get caught up in the manipulation of men. Rather than do it man's way, do it God's way. Go heal people. Go teach them. Go share with them your testimony. Go tell them what you have found. Don't tell them what people have said you need to do and create some, you know, format or some theological, you know, dissertation that you can get your homiletic and hermeneutic down so that way, you know, you've got the credentials in order to go out and do. No. You see, the joy and the love that you have inside when you first get saved is enough to carry you all the way through into eternity. What ruins it, really, is when you start getting all this education that really puts on the back seat your realization of God as opposed to applying both together to make the wisdom of God applicable in the Word of God and the experience of God and combining them to the process of learning to apply God in every circumstance and situation. That's all it boils down to, really. That's what education should be, applying God in everything you do, everything you see, everything you hear, and everything you walk in according to the way He wants you to go, not the way you want to go. Let your doctrine be from God so that it turns you back to God and will always cause you to know God in a more personal and intimate way, and you won't be deceived by the doctrines of men.